Now just to give you a brief outline that, without going into detail what we're going to be going through in this class and we're going to be dealing with the very beginning starting with the bouncing ball and what this all means working that through adding basically a top knot or a drag element and then putting a face on it and then doing a, an exercise where we're going to put into play with an animated character exactly what we just learned in the simple bouncing ball. All the way through this class you're going to find the same elements repeating over and over again. So you're going to definitely want to try not to miss anything because it all hooks into uh, each other. Let me do one thing here. This one. So then we do a little exercise explaining that and that takes us through today. So we're going to do the bouncing ball, we're going to add the three elements, and then we're actually going to do a scene and then figure it out on an exposure sheet and all these words that I'm saying that don't make any sense to you will be covered as we go. I'm just giving you a brief outline. And tomorrow we get into velocities and shooting the speeds of things apart. Everyone would ask me, well how far do you know how far to put the next move away from it? And uh, it's funny to hear them say, does it take hundreds of movements to, to put your, to do your hand in between? Uh, no, we're going to cover that as far as velocities and spacing and timings, put it into an actually animated situation. We're going to be getting into simple principles such as weight and snap, dealing with uh, how elements are, have elasticity to them, which is going to give your animation life. We're going to apply it to an animated scene where you apply this snap that you learned. And then at the end of the week, at the end of each four days, <clears throat> you'll be given a recap scene that you can then take home and on those hundreds of clock hours that you have other than the 32 you're going to spend sitting in front of me, you can then uh, exercise all these things and really hone your skills to be an animator. If you just want to be a half okay animator and you just want to understand the principles, you don't have to do anything. You can just go home and say, that was interesting, and, and it, it all sinks in. These, th you do not get a, a pass or fail in this class. You're going to get a letter of completion. So, I mean, if you come in and sit here and fall asleep, I mean, you, you came here. The idea is to grow as an animator, get as much information as possible. If you don't go home and exercise it, or you just apply it in your everyday work, uh, then you're going to benefit from it. But if uh, you don't exercise these things, they're just going to be information in your hand because there is a big pile of hand brain eye coordination that go into doing this. Big pilot. We're going to get into things like joints and line of action and how that is applied to an animated character. Then we get into week two, which we're going to be dealing with torquing of the body and torquing of particular shapes and apply that to an animated character. We're going to talk about reversals and how to apply force to a character and then you apply it to an animated shape. Uh, primary and secondary actions. We're going to be animating that through, talking it through, how that all works. And usually we cover about four of these particular elements in one day. So we're going to be going through four scenes a day being demonstrated in front of you like rapid fire. So I would say uh, I've seen it happen both ways. Students will just stay with me and watch the monitor and do this, and I've seen other people just say, you know, that's that, and put that aside and just watch, and then they can go home and, and struggle through all that, because this is, you're going to be missing half of it, doing a lot of this. Now, we're going to be doing exercises together where I get up and walk around and say, okay, this is what we're going for. All right, give me your, I think I'm going to give you a few seconds, no more than a minute, five minutes <coughs> at the most uh, in, in any given time, because you're not sitting here paying to draw using your paint to learn animation. So there will be quick execution and then come up and say, here's where I would do it differently or what everyone's missing. We do various exercises with cause and effect and primary, secondary action. We get into simple things, and I think this is out of place now that I'm looking at it, is arcs and simple things on how to find the problems with that and laying arcs out and making schematics and finding points in, in the human anatomy or in any character by using the point system. And we're going to get into some wild thing like that and we'll apply it to a scene with arcs and so forth in exercises where we'll fill in the blanks and actually see that happen. And we're going to get into more, as you can see, we're getting more and more uh, involved as we move through. We're into your eighth class over here where we're going to be dealing with facial squash and stretch 
and uh, blinking and expressions and so forth. We're going to be dealing with the animated tape using the characters uh, in this manner and how you apply them it's the extreme extremes, how extremes are, are found and then gone beyond to to give you your strongest dialogue, and then how to pose out. For example, a 17-foot scene, which is about 11 seconds of animation, with nine poses would be very effective on how you get there. Then you're, you're going to get your recap of week two, utilizing everything we talked about. We talked about things like silhouette, forced perspectives, in and out of camera. So by the end of this course, you're going to cover each one of these exercises, and we're going to go through them together. You're going to see me uh, firsthand animate these things. And each one of these lessons I've designed for a particular reason, because I keep adding elements onto it so they can become more and more detailed as we go. Uh, even though I will have the answers this time, I had to work through these answers uh, at least once. Now I'll be more uh, efficient at it. I already have the answer in front of me. We're going to get into things like attitude, how to find an attitude in the shape. I'm going to actually act you through a scene where a character's attitudes change and why. Why is that character changing its attitude? And I set up a whole scenario in a movie right in front of you, a scene. I acted out Robert De Niro and I. And then we're going to get into uh, walks, uh, which looks difficult, runs, and in and out of camera runs, how to plot them. Uh, runs in place, panning, and what all those increments are going to talk about. All this information in 16 classes you're going to walk away with. Not only with a copy of this exercise and the fact that you've gone through each one of them, but the answers that I've created for you that, that night will be then handed out the following day. So you will be building a book which should look just like this, except it won't be, you, uh, you can three-hole punch it, but right now I just give you those folders to slot it in, and by the end of the night you're just taking them home and then you pull the tape off and put them in however you're going to organize them. That's your job to be organized. I'm giving you the material. Uh, but I do have a three-hole puncher on here that's kind of rusty. We get into flight patterns and pants. Also comedy routines. I threw that in there. Uh, how to pan in place and figure out a schematic. This will be very interesting to people in computers. We talked about live action reference and how I first researched before I go ahead and start wasting my time drawing. We talked about animating crowds and groups and how to uh, deal with them as single shapes. Uh, that might be the same class. And then you get a wrap up of week three. Now we've just finished week three, you'll get your wrap up. I give you a scenario, a situation that you have to go through uh, that basically includes all the elements that we have learned in that week. Then we're getting into the final week, which is uh, pans and more of the mechanics of how animation works, how to do a, a, a vertical pan, uh, horizontal pans both in place uh, and with the pan. You'll learn what all these numbers and increments are that you can barely see on this little piece of paper. But you too will get to have one of these pieces of paper and books to go home with to study. And by the end of it, I'll make each one of these little lines that I put on this paper perfectly understandable to you. But at a high speed. A guy called me the other day and he says he's got a 12 year old daughter who uh, can draw very well. And I, I, I said, well, I really don't think this class is here for 12 years. But I plan on opening a children's school of animation soon. We get into dialogue in the final week. We talk about mouse shapes and how to make them stretch and squash uh, and why we do that. Not only because they look funny, but it gives your dialogue a certain chewiness, how to graph your dialogue, how to take a line and figure out where the highs and lows are, which will reflect your animated action. We actually have this, uh, animate a scene utilizing some of these little characters. And next day we deal with dialogue for two days again because there's so much information. And then our final day, lesson 16, we're going to get into some acting and how to just be an animator and get into acting. I use a little uh, live action reference. This is taken right off of one of the scenes in Robin Hood with Errol Flynn. How he uses his eyes uh, so well. Uh, we get into some uh, other animation where I have actual dialogue scenes that have a lot of personality to them. This is kind of the Igor character, and even a one with like a uh, uh, a woman, a uh, little sparrow who is the guardian to a princess. So I go from being an old man or an old woman.
to Robin Hood, to a crotchety lizard, to an Igor-type spider, all in one city. So, in other words, Milk Call kind of said it when he says, I can do anything as an animator, because he could. He animated everything from you know, an old woman to a bird to a squirrel to a little child. So that gives you a preview, and we're only nine minutes into our class. 